You're finally ready to open a Roth IRA and get you some of that tax-free money. Can I get a what, what? What? Now you have to choose what are the best investments that you can put inside the Roth IRA because you have a lot of choices. And also, you want to avoid what are the worst possible investments that you can put inside that Roth. Oh, no! Well, we're gonna answer all those questions and a whole lot more right now. Let's go. What is going on, GSC fam and Wealth Hacker Nation? It is time to make your life more. It's your always cheerful, always grateful host, Jeff Rose. And today we're doing another reader question. We are asking the CFP, in case you forgot who the CFP is, that is me. Wait a minute. Who are you? That's right. That's Jeff Rose. So if you are interested in answering, I'm sorry, you're not going to answer. you got to ask. If you want to ask me a question you can go to goodfinancialsense.com forward slash ask and there you can submit a question any question that you want it could be investing online business entrepreneurship family about being a dad i don't know if i'm the guy you want to get advice from about being a dad but i do have four kids so i might be able to shed some light either way fill out that form and we will get back to you potentially on an upcoming podcast or youtube video whether you are watching this on youtube or listening to this on the good financial sense podcast so who is asking the question today well the question today comes from aaron and this is what aaron has to ask he says hey jeff I am 28 years old and I keep hearing how much you love the Roth IRA. Yes, Aaron, I love the Roth IRA. We we have a thing. What can I say? The Roth IRA and I, we're an item. What can I say? My wife might be a little jelly, but that's okay. All right. So anyway, you go on to say, I am finally, finally ready to get one, but not sure which one is going to give me the highest return. Should I go with the bank or with one of those online brokers? Thanks for what you do, Aaron. Aaron, thank you for asking this question. Uh, yes, I do love the Roth IRA. I talk about this maybe more than I need to, but it is by far the greatest investment tool that exists. And the fact still remains that many people aren't taking advantage. So I love the fact that you are interested, you want one. And I also love the fact that you're asking, you know, which one's going to give you the highest return. And I will say, and not saying that this is you, but there is this common misconception that Roth IRAs are an investment. Now, I did just say earlier that the Roth IRA is the greatest investment tool that exists. I did not say it's the greatest investment because it's not an investment. It is an investment tool, or you could also refer to it as an investment vehicle, uh, an investment account, because you aren't buying a Roth IRA. You are opening a Roth IRA account, and then you are deciding which investments that you're putting into it. One way that I've always wrapped my head around it, and this has always seemed to help out other people. Earlier, I also referred to it as an investment vehicle. So if you think of a car, any car, like that's the Roth IRA, right? That car is going to take you into tax-free land and you get to decide what passengers that you are putting in that vehicle. And the passengers here are the actual investments. So once again, the Roth IRA is the vehicle or the car, we are deciding today what are the best passengers or the best investments to put in the Roth IRA. Now, since you are a younger investor, 28 years old, you want to make sure that you are taking advantage of what this is giving you, right? So the Roth IRA is giving you tax-free growth. So when you pull this money out later on in life, you're paying zero income tax. Could the IRS change these regs? I mean, of course they can. The IRS can do a lot of things. The Roth IRA has been around since the 90s. They've not changed anything quite yet. So uh, that's not anything that I would be stressing about or freaking out about. Just focus on right now. This is going to give you tax-free growth, tax-free distributions at retirement. So you want to focus on 
high growth and potential. I'll say high risk. I'm not talking like speculative. I'm just saying you want to have higher risk type investments. Now, I'm definitely bringing this up in your situation because in your question, you did ask, should I go with the bank or with one of these online brokers? Because for the most part, you can go open a Roth IRA at a bank, but unless the bank offers some sort of investment options, and typically for a, for a bank or a credit union to do that, they have to partner with some other brokerage firm. And I know this because I used to, I formed a partnership with a credit union, this is years ago, because they didn't offer any investments like ETF stocks or mutual funds. The only thing that they could offer was CDs money market savings account. So a lot of banks nowadays, yes, they do offer traditional investments, but that's because they've added an investment arm or they've partnered with another brokerage firm uh, that can do so. But if you are just opening it with a bank that doesn't have this, so if you're opening a Roth with them, you're not getting the stock market, you're not getting ETFs or mutual funds, you're getting CDs, money market, passbook savings, like whatever the, the term is. So that, that's whenever you see a Roth IRA advertised at a bank and they're advertising it with an interest rate or a yield. So like I've had people ask me, oh, my Roth IRA pays 3% or my bank is offering a Roth IRA that pays, you know, fill in the blank, whatever that percentage is. In that situation, it's not the Roth IRA paying 3%. It's the CD most likely that you would buy to place in your Roth IRA that's paying you 3%. So what are the type of investments that you would want to avoid inside a Roth IRA? Well, first we just talk about the safer ones, the CDs, the money market, the savings accounts. This is not going to pay you a lot. And since we want to take advantage of compounding growth, if, you're, <laughs> if your Roth IRA is compounding by 0.8% and over the next 30, 40 years, you're not going to have a lot of compounding. So you want to avoid that. Another investment that you want to avoid, and I can speak from personal experience on this one, is a fixed annuity. Yes, you can put a fixed annuity inside a Roth IRA, and that's because my mom opened up a Roth IRA and she bought a fixed annuity. Now, why did she do that? That's because the financial advisor that she was working with technically was a was an insurance agent. All they had was their insurance license, so they couldn't sell, couldn't offer anything else other than insurance products. And that's why they he recommended a fixed annuity to go inside the Roth because my mom, I guess, I don't know if he had any other types of annuities either. All I know is that I saw a fixed annuity that was paying like 2% inside a Roth. That's something else that you want to avoid. Other investments that you want to avoid, especially when you're younger, are bonds. That could be corporate bonds, even high yield bonds, municipal bonds. You know, if you're trying to buy a tax-free bond and put that inside a Roth IRA that's already offering you tax-free growth, it's like you don't need two vehicles. You already got one vehicle. So buying a municipal bond, putting that inside a Roth doesn't make any sense. And the last one I'll mention, and this is not because it's too safe, but it's because it's just too dang expensive. And that is a variable annuity. And I need to dedicate another podcast. It's been a while since I've talked about variable annuities. But yes, you could buy a variable annuity. And just so we're clear, right? And I didn't say this about the fixed annuity, but if you buy an annuity, it offers this tax shelter, tax protection. But you don't need that because you, you're already getting that with the Roth. Once again, you only need one vehicle, not two. But even more so with the variable annuity is the cost. All the, inter all the internal expenses are going to eat you alive. Get in my belly. You do not want a variable annuity. If somebody's trying to sell you a variable annuity, put that inside your Roth. You need to run. Run. First, you need to kick them in the nuts and then you run. I'm sorry if that seems violent, but if somebody's trying to sell you a variable annuity inside a Roth, in my opinion, they got no business advising people on money or how to invest because that is just straight highway robbery. Now, I want to mention one more investment that should not go into the Roth. And this one might be somewhat controversial because if this investment were to hit and you were to 10x, 20x, 100x your return and have tax-free growth. Like, okay, then why wouldn't I do that? So what is this investment? This would be a penny stock. I want to argue that 
you got no business buying a penny stock inside your Roth IRA. If it hits, awesome, great. Like then we're talking tax-free growth. I mean, that would be awesome. That would be phenomenal. But here is why you don't want to do that. Because right now, if you are 28 years old, like Aaron is, you put $6,000 into your Roth, you put all that into a penny stock and it doesn't work out. And just for extreme illustrative purposes here, Let's say that the $6,000 investment into this penny stock inside the Roth is now worth nothing. The IRS doesn't care what you put your money into. They don't care what you invest into. So you don't get a, a buyback or a do-over. You have a annual $6,000 contribution that can go into the Roth. Once you do that, if you lose, you can't go back and put in another $6,000. You can put in $6,000 next year, but you're only allowed to put in $6,000 per year. So if you pick a penny stock that doesn't quite work out, I mean, you have literally shot yourself in the foot for hundreds of if not hundreds of thousands of dollars of compounding interest because you took a risk that just didn't work out. So yes, we want high risk, high return investments. We just don't want speculative and we don't want stupid. All right, so let's start breaking down what are some of the best investments that you can put inside of your Roth. Well, first, I'm just gonna give you a little sneak peek into my investing journey and just to show you like different options. So for me, when I first started investing, I, I didn't know anything about investing. ETFs were around, but they weren't nearly as abundant as they are now. I definitely didn't trust myself trying to put a lot of money into to stocks. I did try buying a tech stock after the whole dot-com bubble burst, and that got me nowhere in a hurry. It was about $500. Like I said, I didn't have a lot to invest, but that $500 turned up being worth nothing or maybe it was worth like 50 bucks. Either way, I know that I did not make any money on that investment. But what I was doing on a consistent basis was I was putting in, I think it was like 20, was it 50 or 25 or 50? I think it was $25 a month that I was investing. And then, but the mutual fund that I was investing into had a minimum of $50 that you could buy in like dollar cost averaging, right? ACH. So what I would do, what I, what the advisor set it up was a every other month purchase. So 25 bucks would come out of my checking account. And then every other month when I finally got $50, that's when I would start investing. And I chose this mutual fund because this is what the advisor sold me. But <laughs> it was an okay mutual fund. It wasn't horrible. But the reason I did that for a beginner investor is because I didn't trust myself picking stocks. I didn't have a ton of money. So I wanted to use a professional and a professional money manager to choose the stocks in it. You know, what were the best investments to put inside, you know, that fund? So that's why I went with the mutual fund route. And I would definitely encourage, maybe not mutual funds per se, but like with ETFs where you're getting a basket of different stocks that you don't have to manage. You just pick the index, you pick the ETF, you sit back, and you collect the returns. But definitely sticking with the theme of staying in the stock market, you know, there's a few different ways that you can go about this. So the first method, I would call this the blended approach. And this may be for somebody that they know they need to be in the stock market. They're just not 100% comfortable putting all their money in stocks. And I've seen this with 20 year olds. I've seen this with 30 year olds. It's just this They've never done it before. Most likely their parents have never done this before. And so they really don't have any experience, uh, anyone that's really can walk them through it. So they, they know they need to be in the market because that's what they hear. They hear me talking about it. They hear everybody talking about it, but they're just, they, they're just not ready to put it all. So a blended approach would be putting around say 80% or 90% in the stock market and the other 20 to 10% would be in bonds. And I know that I just said, why you don't want to put bonds inside your Roth, but that's only if you're putting 100% bonds. If you're comfortable with a 90, 10, 80, 20 approach, that will get you exposure to the stock market, but it would also help you ease some of that burden whenever the market drops, 
whenever the market goes south, are you going to lose money? Most likely, yes. Are you going to lose as much as everybody else that is 100% in the stock market? No. And do I, I mean, would I prefer somebody, somebody be 100% in the stock market? Of course I would. But what I would rather have is somebody that stays in the market that stays in the Roth for the rest of their life. And I say that because I've had many situations where somebody thought that they were aggressive, thought they could handle the risk of the stock market, but the first time that they see a drop in their portfolio, they're done. They're out. They can't handle anymore. So they cash it out. And I've had, I just, I'm thinking of one situation where this lady, a uh, younger lady, she had like 3,000, three or $4,000 in, her Roth IRA market, bad market, bear market happens. She sees a drop. She's not comfortable with it. So she doesn't just like sell out of the investments. I mean, she sells out of the investments and cashes out the Roth IRA. What? And I'm like, oh my gosh. Like, and for me, it wasn't seeing a $3,000 Roth IRA walk out, you know, like it wasn't that like losing that uh, a smaller client like that. It was because I knew that she didn't just lose 3000. Like she lost 50, a hundred, maybe 200,000, maybe even more if she would have added to it over, you know, the next several years. Like that's how much in growth she missed out of because she was so focused on what she saw right now, all the fear of seeing her, her money drop. And it wasn't even that big of a drop you know, in the grand scheme of things, but it was enough to scare her. And she ended up not just like I said, getting out of the investments, but she completely closed out the Roth IRA too. So the blended approach could help somebody stay in the Roth longer. So how would you do this? You could open an account with M1 Finance. You could build a custom portfolio of that 80, 20, 90, 10. Uh, you could do some of that in ETFs. You could choose individual stocks and then do the bonds with ETFs. Or you can choose one of their expert pies and that has a similar blended approach like that. You could also do this with Betterment. Betterment you know, might be easier for somebody that doesn't want to pick anything. You just choose your financial goals. They'll build that portfolio for you. So those are a few options you can look at. So that's the blended approach. Now, if you wanna go more of the diversified stock approach, then we could go plain and simple ETFs, exchange traded funds. You know, Vanguard is a very common household name. They've got the VOO, which is the S&P 500 ETF. So basically buying that one ETF, you're getting access to 500 US companies and not just any 500, we're talking the top 500 US companies. So that is an option. There are several Vanguard ETFs that you can buy. Now you don't have to go to M1 Finance. That is another option that you can go with, or you could go with a TD Ameritrade or an E-Trade or an Ally Invest. Any of these is going to offer one, the Roth IRA. And also you have the ability to buy these ETFs at either zero commissions or a super low commission or super low cost. Now, the one place you can't go is Robinhood. And, and why can't you go to Robinhood? That's because Robinhood does not offer Roth IRAs. That's correct. I don't know why. They're like one of the only ones that doesn't. So that's why we're not talking about them. I guess we are, but we're not talking about them as an option for your Roth IRA because Robinhood, they just like to close down their account or their service whenever there's a lot of high trading volume. No, that's what Robinhood does. Okay, anyway, sorry. Don't know where that came from. Going to number three of the best investments for your Roth IRA is the paycheck stock method. And I talked a little bit about this in a previous podcast where you know earning $1,000 a month in dividends. I mean, dividends are awesome. Buying dividend stocks that continue to basically send you a check, could be every month, depending on when the stock actually pays a dividend. Let's just say every quarter that you're getting a check from the stock just for owning it. And I also talked previously about how you could buy, let's say like a communication stock could be Verizon, could be AT&T. You get enough stock where the dividend eventually is paying for your cell phone bill. I mean, that's pretty cool. Like, look, I've got a free phone. Thank you, Verizon. Can you hear me now? So here we're looking at 
dividend stocks. I love talking about the dividend aristocrats. It's just, it's easy to talk about. It's a comprehensive list of the top, I think it's like 65 companies, maybe 67. These are all stocks that have a history of one, paying dividends, that's good. But even better, number two, have a history of increasing their dividend. So you are buying a company that has a history of not only paying, you know, sending you that paycheck every quarter, but also increasing your paycheck. So you're getting a raise every year. Uh, there, that's the dividend aristocrats. There's also the dividend kings. There's a few different dividend categories out there of these lists of different stocks that are paying dividends. Either way, by doing the paycheck stock method, you're choosing stocks that I mean, you're basically on their payroll. They're sending you a check. And once again, you can use platforms like M1 Finance. Uh, that's actually where I would go. You can also look at Ally, TD Ameritrade, E-Trade, a few different options. Basically, you're trying to find a place that offers the Roth IRA right? and, and has easy access. What I love about M1 Finance in this situation is that the ability to buy fractional shares. So that way, if you're trying to buy any of these dividend paying stocks and you just don't have enough to buy a whole share, well, guess what? Just you can buy a fractional share. So you actually build a dividend aristocrat portfolio of individual stocks. We're not talking about ETFs or mutual funds. We're talking about individual stocks, but you can automatically set it up where every single month you're buying fractional shares into, you don't have to do all 65 stocks. Maybe it's five, maybe it's 10, or if you full send type person, you want to do all, all of them. Yes, you could set up an investment pie with M1 Finance that has every single dividend aristocrat stock that exists. Like that is freaking awesome. One of the reasons I love technology, I love fintech, and I love M1 Finance. Another investment strategy that you could take advantage of if you are a little bit more risky, you, you like, to, like to take a little bit more risk, but this is high tech or get techie. And what we're talking about here, the, the get techie method is so traditionally speaking, when you are, when you think of a higher risk stock and we're not talking about penny stocks or uh, like startups, we're talking about like, I mean, I guess technically startups, you're thinking like in the technology sector. So these are companies, you know, that high tech, high growth aren't going to pay a lot of dividends because they are basically just any profits are just being funneled back into the business to continue to help it grow. And I mean, there's a lot of companies like this. I mean, this is where you start thinking about maybe not so much now, but like the Facebooks of the world. You think of Tesla right now, Google, uh, I mean, Microsoft back in the day. I mean, these are all the, the tech stocks that you can think of. These are meant for high growth, high risk. That's why they are very attractive to put inside a Roth IRA. Now, I don't know if this counts as a tech stock. I mean, it kind of is payment processor, but like I remember whenever I remember when Visa first came out, um, I was not able to get in the IPO, but I was able to get to basically buy when it went to the secondary market, which is buying on the New York Stock Exchange. But I bought it and it just continued to go up and up and up. And that was one that I bought inside my Roth IRA. I think a, a very popular one right now would be Tesla. All the Elon Musk lovers out there buying Tesla. And I mean, those that bought Tesla back when it, whatever, whatever it was, and they've seen the growth that they had that inside a Roth IRA. I think they're pretty happy right now. Like that would be one that you could take a look at. Another strategy that I mentioned in my M1 finance portfolio return video uh, are the FANG stocks. Now with Netflix recently reporting that they're losing subscribers, I'm not sure that that's one that I would include now, but basically the FANG stocks were Facebook, Apple, G was Google, but technically now that's Alphabet. Um, and then you had Netflix was also included in there, but then Amazon. Now, I don't know. I feel like it needs to be turned to like Fant, Fant, not Fang, you know, since Google is now Alphabet and I don't know. No, I can't do Fant because no, it's fat. <laughs> it's a fat. I got to, I got to relook at this acronym. Basically, how do you throw Tesla in there? Like, how do you include Tesla part of you know, the, the, the FANG stocks. And maybe somebody's already done this and I'm just not aware, but that is another strategy that you could do. And if you don't like any of those stock methods and you want to do, you want to emulate somebody that has had a ton of success finding undervalued properties, finding those, those hidden gems where well, you can do it, the, the buy it like Buffett. And this will probably take you doing more research, or if you want to do it the lazy way or just the strategic way, uh, you've, 
take a look at Berkshire Hathaway and you look at all the different companies that they own and try to find companies that are similar in their different sectors that you could invest into and then you could become your own Buffett. But basically, I mean, you could also say, I'm trying to find the blue chips, the, hey, I'm looking for some of these value stocks that were once trading at X and now they're trading at a discount. So now this is a buying opportunity. Once again, that's going to take a little bit more work on your part, but you know, if you like to buy it like Buffett, if you're a fan of Mr. Warren, the Oracle of Omaha, then you might be able to have some fun. And if it works out inside your Roth, you're going to have some nice tax-free gains. So up until this point, we have talked a lot about the stock market. Well, here's the cool thing, right? You don't just have to put money in stocks inside your Roth IRA. Another option is Fundrise. You could actually put, yes, real estate inside your Roth IRA. Now, this would, I'll say be, it's not tricky in, in essence, but you may not know this. If you didn't, you're going to know now. So you technically can have more than one Roth IRA. You can have several Roth IRAs, but that doesn't mean that I can open up one here at Fundrise and put $6,000 in. I can open one at M1 Finance and put $6,000 in. You can still only put in $6,000 per year. Like that, that hasn't changed. So it, you can only put in $6,000 a year. Now, if you want to take 3,000 of that and put that into Fundrise and the other 3,000 put that into M1 Finance, yes, you can do that. So that's, if this, I don't know if that's tricky or not. It just basically it creates another account, another Roth IRA account that you have to open and keep track of. But either way, long story is, is that if you want to put money inside real estate, inside your Roth IRA, you can do so with Fundrise. So Fundrise does give you that option to do so. And there are some self-directed IRA custodians that will allow a little bit more, I'll say, riskier, uh, high risk type investments. That's probably beyond the scope of this podcast, even though I'm going to mention something else here in a second that kind of gets to this. But anyway, long story short, you can do, I think I already said that twice, didn't I? You can do, that's right. You can do real estate inside your Roth IRA. Now I know what you're thinking at this point. You're like, gosh, Jeff, like I'm so shocked that we've talked about the Roth IRA, tax-free money. You love that. You've had so many episodes dedicated to crypto and how much you love Bitcoin. I'm really, really shocked that you've not said anything about putting Bitcoin in a Roth. Well, it's funny you would ask that because yes, that is a choice and it does require a little bit more work, not probably much different than what we saw with Fundrise. But there are custodians that will allow you to put your money, your Bitcoin inside your Roth. So this is just one example. And I have not done this in full transparency. So this is Bitcoin IRA. You can go to bitcoinira.com if you wanna check them out. But they show you how you can put, you're right, Bitcoin inside a Roth IRA. Uh, it basically requires, you have to have a third-party custodian, very similar to having like a self-directed 401k, which I do have. So this is an option. There is another another option. I think it's called iTrust Capital. You can also look up. It does give you that ability. Now, once again, I don't, I've not done this yet. I do have a, a buddy of mine who has his Bitcoin inside a Roth. I cannot speak from experience yet. It is something that I am most definitely looking into especially because my kids have Roth IRAs. So I'm kind of excited about the idea of them investing into Bitcoin inside their Roth. I mean, you talk about some tax-free growth on Bitcoin over their lifetime. I mean, they might as well like, they need to be thanking me now. At some point they will, I'm sure they will. But all that to be said is that you can put cryptocurrency or Bitcoin inside your Roth. If you're gonna do this, double check with your CPA, double check with a financial professional, make sure that it makes sense for your situation, read all the fine print, read all the disclaimers, make sure that you understand what that means. So everything that I have outlined at this point, which makes this pretty cool about the Roth. Now for me right now, I just have the one Roth IRA account for me and I have traditional stocks 
don't have any ETF. So it is all 100% stocks at this time. I am looking at the Roth IRA with Bitcoin option. Uh, the only reason I haven't is just because I've been too busy creating content. I haven't, I haven't had enough time to do more of a deep dive into it with uh, Bitcoin trading where it is now. Like it is something I should be looking at. So it's something I, I will look at, at at some point. I would consider it. So for me right now, I just have the one Roth IRA account. It's at the original brokerage firm that I started uh, where I had my financial planning practice that I sold. So they're the ones that are holding it. So I don't have any real estate inside of my Roth. I do in my self-directed 401k. Uh, I do have a Fundrise account, but right now it's not set up uh, to put money into Roth. And that's because it's been several years that I've been able to put new money into a Roth. Yes, I could have done the whole backdoor conversion and that's a whole other story, but that's just, that's how I'm doing it right now. Now for you or for Aaron, you know, who is thinking about putting money into a Roth and whether he wants to go with the bank or an online broker, he has the ability now, if he wanted to do some into M1 finance, if he wanted to do some uh, into like Fundrise, he could do that. You know, so if he wants to do Fundrise, if he wants to do M1 finance, if he wants to do Betterment, like he has choices. He has options. And that's 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 the beautiful thing. When you've got options for tax-free money, like that is a beautiful thing. So if you are listening to this, and even if you're a little bit older than Aaron, I still would have you consider if you're 10 years out or greater from retirement, take some risk. Take some risk. Even if you do like the blended approach, take some risk, put some money in the stock market, see your money grow, see the power of the Roth IRA. Hope you enjoyed this podcast. If you did, be sure to like, leave a comment. If you're watching this on YouTube, subscribe, hit that notification bell, all that jazz, all that good stuff. As always, this is Jeff Rose reminding you that it's your money, it's your life, and only you can make it awesome. Until next time, peace.